Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are the Lions. On a day the Indians entered the trade market, we have a good old-fashioned pitcher's duel at Progressive Field. On one side, Corey Kluber, the soft-spoken, stoic right-hander, coming off a near-perfect outing in Kansas City. On the other side is Felix Hernandez, known as King Felix, riding a streak of 13 straight starts of at least seven innings, allowing two runs or fewer. We'll have the latest trade news and a stellar pitching matchup. But right now, it's time to roll on Sports Time Ohio. The trade wind swirling here at Progressive Field as the Indians and the Mariners lock horns in game two of this three-game series. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. You may have heard by now Justin Masterson traded by the Indians today to St. Louis in exchange for a minor league outfield prospect. We'll have more on that as we uh, get into tonight's ball game. But speaking of pitching, we've got a great pitching matchup tonight. Two guys really at the top of their game. Corey Kluber, who's given up two earned runs or less in seven of his last eight starts going for Cleveland. Well, you got to look forward to Kluber. He has had a tremendous month of July. His best game was probably his last start in the month of July. He didn't get a win. He's 3-0 and in the month. He was perfect, almost through seven innings, and Corey Kluber had a no decision in that ball game, but he's going to be just fine. It's the first time he's going to face the Seattle Mariners. He's going up against their king, who has an ERA of under two for the whole year. He's 11-2. and It's a Cy Young type of season. He has won at the four, and he won his hit the Indians in his last start, but this guy can change speeds. He's got a good breaking ball. He can add and subtract to his fastball. Anything you need done, he can do it. 13 straight starts, seven innings, two or less runs, and that's a record. The one shot the Indians have when you look at it against King Felix, in the last five games he started, the Mariners are averaging fewer than three runs of support per start. So maybe that'll help the tribe out here tonight. What a great matchup, though. Kluber. And Hernandez square off mano a mano tonight here at Progressive Field. All the play-by-play -play is coming up next.
McDonald's. I'm loving it. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Panini's. Get overstuffed at Panini's Bar and Grill. And buy Jeep. Visit jeep.com to learn more. Hey, welcome you into Progressive Field on a beautiful night. Here in downtown Cleveland, Indians and the Mariners, it's game two of their three-game series. Tribe has taken the field. And the Indians have a little bit of a different look about them tonight. And with more on that, let's go downstairs and bring in Katie with us. Matt, it's been well documented how close that this Indians clubhouse is. And even though they understand that trades are just part of the business, they all really cared for, and Justin Masterson was a good friend. Well, you'll notice every single player on the Indians team has now gone with the high socks or the pants up. They figured if Justin can't be around, we might as well look like him. Last time I remember a show of support like this was when the Indians rolled up their pant legs in honor of Jim Tomey. That was a celebration, though, on his birthday. Right. But it was also a coming together for that team. Perhaps 1997. under different circumstances, a galvanizing point maybe centering around the trade of Justin Masterson. Time will tell. Corey Kluber is on the hill for the Indians tonight, looking for his 11th win. Let's look at the lineup he'll face for Lloyd McClendon, Seattle Mariners, brought to you by Toyota. Dustin Ackley, Andy Chavez, Robinson Cano. Then it's Kendry Morales, Kyle Seeger, and Logan Morrison. Mike Zanino, Brad Miller getting the start at shortstop tonight, and James Jones batting ninth. Our GMC starting pitcher is Corey Kluber, making his 23rd start this year. Kluber, a record of 10-6, 277 ERA. He's had a tremendous uh, month of July. 3-0, a 197 ERA, opposition hitting just 184. His very first start against the Seattle Mariners in his career. So um, they're going to be in for a treat, maybe, because the way he's been pitching, you don't want to face him. He'll be closing out his last or his month of July this year. He was 4-0 in the month of May. So Corey Kluber. Will take aim against Dustin Ackley, who had a good series opener last night. He was three for five with a double. We're underway. A fastball strike from Corey Kluber. 72 degrees, our game time temperature. And it's quickly 0-2 on Ackley. Kluber fires. And a fly ball hit to left. Drifting back, Chris Dickerson. And we've got one away. Take a look at the Kia Indians defense behind Kluber tonight. It looks like this. Dickerson in left, Brantley in center, Murphy in right. Chisholm Hall at third, Cabrera at short, Kipnis at second, Santana at first with Gomes doing the catching. Nick Carapaza calling the balls and strikes. Gabe Morales at first, Angel Hernandez at second, the crew chief Larry Vanover down at third. Andy Chavez only batted once last night, came in late defensively and got one A-B. He's 0 for 1. And he takes a first pitch strike. Kluber comes out firing here tonight. All four pitches have been for strikes. Well, he did that in his last start against the Royals where he retired the first 19 batters he faced. Off the end of the bat into the Indians' dugout. That ball had Brad Mills' good, name on yeah, it. Yeah, it did, and I think it got a part of his uniform on it, too. He was sitting right in the walkway. He couldn't get out of the way of it. Terry Francona was able to duck out of the way. Now Kluber's two-strike pitch to Chavez. That's a defensive swing and a fastball that was up and in.
Now the two-strike pitch. Broke oh. his bat. And Jason Kipnis will throw him out two down. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Which pitcher will blink first? That's kind of the uh, the duel, the stare down that we're looking at here tonight. And when you're in a game like this where you figure hits are going to come at a premium, you've got to do some little things. Maybe sacrifice a runner over, move a runner if need be. Well, if it turns out to be the way we expect it to be, where both these guys have their good stuff and go up against these offenses, there's not going to be a whole lot of offense going on. So the little things are going to turn into big things. Big bouncer for Kipnis. He throws out Cano, and the Mariners are gone. One, two, three on eight pitches here in the top of the first. Now the Indians are coming to bat when we come back. Felix Hernandez on the hill tonight for Seattle. Let's take a look at the Indian starting lineup that he will be working against for Terry Francona. It's brought to you by Progressive. Jason Kipnis in the leadoff spot. As Dribble Cabrera, then Michael Brantley. Carlos Santana, Lonnie Chisinau, and Nick Swisher. Then it's David Murphy, Jan Gomes, and Chris Dickerson. Our GMC starting pitcher is Felix Hernandez. And Hernandez is having some kind of year, 11-2. His ERA is under 2, 199. This will be his 23rd start. He beat the Indians earlier this year back on June 29th. And we went to eight innings, just allowed the one hit, walked three, struck out nine. But in this ballpark, this will be his 10th start. He is three and five, has a 450 ERA. Cleveland hitting 291 off of him in his 52 innings pitched. And it's the highest ERA in any ballpark. It ties with U.S. Cellular Field. High fly ball, left field, back is Ackley. And right on the front edge of the warning track, he pulls it down for out number one. Let's check out that Mariners defense in left field. That was Ackley making the catch. And Jones is in center. Chavez is in right. Seager at third. Miller is at short. Cano at second. Morrison at first. Danino doing the catching. They are rated number one in the league. They have made 49 errors. And they have allowed just 28 unearned runs as a team. Big difference in uh, the ballparks in his career. Now low ball one to as dribble Cabrera. But again, like yesterday, we, we gave you the road splits on Iwakuma. And that was, well, what's he now, 5-0, and oh, and that was his ninth win on the road. 14 straight road starts without yes. a loss. Well, this year, this guy, Hernandez, this is his 12th start. He's 4-0 with a 180 80 area on the road. So he pitches better on the road than he does at home. But only four decisions. Yeah. Well, they don't score. I'm sure when he's out there on the mound. Breaking ball foul back. 
You know, it could be easy for a team to get complacent when you have a guy like this that goes out and never gives anything up. And you got to match up against the A's a lot, the Angels. Hard hit ground ball right at Cano. Two down. Our stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Last 13 starts, Hernandez has seven wins, just one loss, and an ERA of 136. He has 113 strikeouts in 99 innings. Yeah, and I mean, you know, just the. Tom Seaver did it back in 1971 where he went 13 starts, seven plus innings, you know. Uh, two or less runs. It's something that is so difficult to do. But that was in the National League. That was in the National League, right. Fastball in there for a strike. Well, with the trading of Justin Masterson, uh, there's been a lot of talk about what happened to him this year and, and why the drastic drop-off. You know, the velocity is certainly something that jumps out at you but I, I look at Hernandez and I'm not saying the velocity dip has been as severe but he's not the blazer he was when he first came up but boy his secondary stuff is so good that if he locates his fastball well he, he doesn't have to blow it by you well his slider his changeup is spectacular and that's something that you know Masterson doesn't have one two three go the Indians here on the first on eight pitches Your Northern Ohio Honda dealers by the Cleveland Clinic. Call today for an appointment today. And by the Northeast Ohio Ford dealers. Second inning, no score. Indians and the Mariners both went one, two, three. Both went on eight pitches in the first inning. That's how, that's how you're going to have to hit against these guys. You don't want them to get ahead of you because they have the pitches to put you away. And if you make out it's early, just make sure you do it on the pitch you're looking for. Henry Morales will lead off the second 0 for 5 last night. Morales just one hit in 15 at bats since joining Seattle. Kluber, a strike at the knees. Well, you mentioned last night we had an opportunity. We saw him with Minnesota prior to getting traded to Seattle. He didn't look very good. He looked over aggressive when he was with the Twins. And I got to tell you, he didn't don't look much better last night. Swings here and a liner right at Dickerson. 
One away. The Indians traded Justin Masterson earlier today to the St. Louis Cardinals. In exchange, the Indians get James Ramsey, who just two years ago was a first-round pick. And this year at Double A, he had 13 homers, 36 runs batted in, in 67 games. Played in the College World Series with Florida State. He was the 23rd overall pick. He's a left-handed hitter. Chris Antonetti says he can play all three outfield spots. He's played center. Kyle Seeger. Takes, it's a called strike. Interesting in that since 2002, this is the 10th trade between the Indians and the Cardinals. So you talk about two teams that certainly have a history. Feeling comfortable with each other when mm -hmm. you do make a trade? Just last year, of course, the Indians got Mark Zipchinski, and that's turned out to be a very good trade for Cleveland. They sent Juan Herrera to the Cardinals. And then Corey Kluber, of course, came via San Diego in the trade that sent Jake Westbrook to St. Louis. That has turned out to be a very good trade, of course, for the Indians. Two-strike pitch. Spun him out of the way. And the year before that, the Indians traded Mark DeRosa to the Cardinals, and they got Chris Perez, who turned out for a few years there to be a very solid closer, an all-star. One-two pitch. Fouled back. The other trade that jumps out at you between these two that worked out really well for Cleveland was when they sent Chuck Finley to the Cardinals back in 02 and got Coco Crisp. Yeah. Now the 1 2. Out of play again. Seeger's having a heck of a year and he's showing why. Battling Kluber here in this at bat. He was two for five with a triple last night. Well, right there, he, he just fouled off a pitch he couldn't do anything with. So he was just fighting to, to live for one more pitch. That ball that Kluber threw to Seager was the first and only ball out of the strike zone so far tonight out of 15 pitches. Logan Morrison waits on deck here in the second. Now Kluber takes aim, the one two, slider down and in. Evens the count, two balls, two strikes. Seeger with 16 dingers, 25 doubles. And last night. Swung the bat very well. <laughs> now the 2-2. Beats the shift with a base hit. Seeger last night beat the shift with a bunt single. Came around to score in their four-run fourth inning. Time now for our Here Right Audiology Sounds of the Game. Here's Justin Masterson on being dealt to St. Louis. I mean, I've kind of come to grips with the idea of you know, not knowing where I'm going to be next year, and that doesn't really concern me. Yeah, I think especially once you know, the benchmark was, oh, are, are you going to get traded? I don't know. Well, I just got traded. So that, that takes that part away. And so the rest is just to be able to, to finish out the season, uh, to do what it takes, you know, hopefully make a run in the postseason and do great things there, and then you know, sit back and say, all right. Now, it's not the first time that Masterson has been traded, but he told me today it's a little tougher this time around because he was really part of this team. Yes, he was. And, and a big part of this team. Into being a part of this yeah. team. He a said great he's, uh, guy. He said he's penciled in to start Saturday for St. Louis. You're not going to beat a better person than Justin Masterson. The you know, one pitch, swing and a miss. You know, Rick, the other thing, too, in talking with Justin, it's not that he was frustrated, but he, he just, he'd been searching for answers, trying to figure out, A, what happened to his velocity this year, and B, 
trying to compensate for it. He just never really got into any kind of rhythm. You know, the strange thing about it is if he doesn't know what happened to him, how can anybody else? Yeah. I mean, then you can ask anybody you want, but they can't even know if he doesn't know. Two-strike pitch. Bang foul. He told me yesterday, he said, you know, I, I feel fine. I don't, I don't have an aching elbow or a, a shoulder that barks when I throw. He said, I don't think the knee was a, had anything to do with the dip in velocity. But it just, he said, when I would reach back to try to get it, it just wasn't there. And certainly it forces you to have to adjust. And sometimes it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Now the set by Kluber and the two-strike pitch. And a lot of times, Rick, when a trade like this occurs, it can have an adverse effect on the team because it can signal the team, well, I guess that means they're pulling a plug on the season. They don't think we can contend. While the the players are all down, nobody's hip, hip, hooray. You know, they, they understand this is a, a friend and teammate that they're saying goodbye to. I think they all understand that Nice grab by Santana. Goes to first for the out. Throw down a second. Double play. And the inning is over. I think the players understand that ownership, management, they're not giving up on this bunch. Double play gets Kluber out of the second. Carlos Santana, Lonnie Chisinau, Nick Swisher do up here for the tribe. Santana riding an eight game hitting streak. And he's gone 16 for 31 during his tear. So to say he's hot would be an understatement. Six homers, 10 runs batted in during the streak. And Santana, for his part, three for 16 in his career against Felix Hernandez. Two walks, two strikeouts. Yeah, but I don't know if he's ever been as hot as he is right now facing him now. You know, he's uh, he's been doing everything so well. Swings at the first pitch and sends it sky high to left. Ackley will make the catch one away. Let's go downstairs and bring in Katie with him. Katie, what's your sense of how the ball players handled the news of the trade of Justin Masters? Well, Matt, there's no doubt it was a quiet clubhouse today, a very somber one. And Jan Gomes pretty much summed up exactly how everyone was feeling when they heard the news about Justin Masterson. Losing Justin is it's tough. It's a it's a it's a tough day here today, and uh, 
I mean, just the kind of guy that he's been. And I mean, everyone knows he's a he's a big name around here, man. We're gonna we're losing a, a pretty good leader, and you know what, man? I mean, he, it's it's I mean, it's tough to even talk about it. You know, he's he's meant so much to us around here, and just his his leadership here. It's you know we look forward to you know talking to him again. I guess across the field now. It is part of the business, but they still develop relationships and friendships. And so when you have to say goodbye, it's never easy. And never, no. As players, you know, you're, you're together more than you are with your regular family during the course of a baseball season. And one of you, when one of your leaders or your big guys or your favorite people get traded, it, it's tough to take no matter what. I mean, they'll move on. They'll, they'll keep going because you have to. That's the nature of the business. You know, you wish him well. You you hope he does well wherever he goes, and and you'll run into him somewhere else. That's just the name of the game. It's a cruel business. Nick Swisher takes a strike. And if you ever have a chance to, you know, that, that we play the Cardinals, if he's with him and we face him, you want to beat him. You're going to try to beat him. That's just the way it goes. Quickly, 0-2 on Nick Swisher. Felix Hernandez has thrown 13 pitches. 11 have been strikes. To left field again. Ackley makes all three catches in left field here in the second. And it only took Hernandez six pitches this time. We go down to the third inning. No score. Our pitcher's duel starting to unfold the way we thought. The two pitchers have combined. This is crazy. The two pitchers have combined to throw 37 pitches. 32 of them have been strikes. Yeah, Kluber six for six first pitch strikes. Mike Zanino going to lead off for Seattle. And then Brad Miller and James Jones, bottom third of the Mariners order. Zanino, two for three last night. He doubled, and he also homered. One last thing on, on the trade today. From the Masterson perspective, uh, moving from a team to team midseason like this, I would venture a guess that players move around a lot more now than they did 30 years ago. Yeah, no question. When you were traded from Cleveland to Milwaukee, I thought I remember you telling me one time that the first time you walked into the Milwaukee clubhouse, it, the reception was a little chilly. Well, yeah, I mean, because you get traded for one of their most popular guys. When I got traded, it was for Gorman Thomas. And, you know, you go in there and, 
he had spent a lot of time there and had some very good years. So you go in there, you're just wanting to play baseball, but you've got to fit in mm -hmm. to the family. You know, and it's not an easy thing to do, especially during mid-year, because you're there, you're thrown right into fire. He says he's starting Saturday. Yeah. You know what? They expect him to go out there and win. So uh, it's, you know, and he will do his best, I'm sure. Down the right field line, but that's going to slice out of play. It all depends, too, at the cast of characters that are well, in that clubhouse. I don't think there are any Pete Vukovic's <laughs> over in St. Louis, so it may be a little easier for Masty to, to blend in and see. I would think so, yeah. <laughs> or Bob Euchre's doing the game, and <laughs> they, they had a cast of characters. Wasn't exactly the Island of Misfit Toys, but maybe not far from it, huh? They had some gamers there, I will say that. Mike Zanino goes down swinging. That's the first strikeout for Corey Kluber. One down here in the third. First strikeout in the game. And it comes off uh, one of Kluber's best pitches. It's going to be the slider. As when he gets ahead of you, boy, you can be in trouble right there if you're a right-handed hitter. Zanino, there you go. He's going to sit him down. Strikeout number one. It's funny because now Hernandez has five double-digit strikeout games. Kluber has six. Hernandez is, uh, you know, Three times, he's double digits and no walks. Kluber's done it twice. Oh, what a catch at third by Lonnie Chisenhall. That was a rocket off the bat of Brad Miller. And somehow Chisenhall snared it for out number two. Well, it's just reactions is what it is. It was right into his tracks. It was off to his backhand side. He really didn't have a chance to take a step. You just put it to your backhand. It was down enough. You make the play. So two down now for James Jones. Last night, Jones 0 for 4, struck out three times. Jones last night made a terrific play defensively in center field to take Extra bases away from Nick Swisher. But in his first taste of big league baseball this year, he's had his ups and downs offensively. Yeah, like a lot of young players do. You know, once that book gets out on you, you get scouted when you get up here and you have some success. People will challenge you early when you get to the big leagues with fastballs, and then they'll see that swing, and they'll go to work on it. Swung on and missed. He goes down swinging, and the Mariners go one, two, three. Kluber strikes out a pair, needs 10 pitches to sail through the third.
Basketball on Fox Sports Ohio, taking in a little tribe action here tonight. Austin Carr, Campy Russell, in the gang, all in the house. Boy, are they gearing up for an exciting basketball season with the return of LeBron James. Everybody, no kidding, is That's very excited. It's be a lot of fun for them this year, no doubt. AC, that's their golf season, man. He's getting ready and hitting it. Yes, indeed. David Murphy going to lead off for the Indians here in the home half of the third. One for four with a double last night. Shows bunt, but he pulled it back. It's ball one. Six up, six down so far for Hernandez. All three hitters try to go the opposite field last time, and all three fly out to left. That's all right, though. There's four been, been four balls hit to left field, staying on it already, but they're trying to get aggressive, not, not let him get to that change up early, at least the first time through. Breaking ball to Cano. He short hops it. One away. Don't forget, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STOFANPHOTO for a chance to have them shown during one of our telecasts. It's all courtesy of AT&T. Jan Gomes with one out here in the third inning. Last night, Gomes was one for four with a run batted in. Gomes has hit in five consecutive games. And if you go back to July 13th, he's been on a very good tear. In his last 13 games, Gomes is hitting 422 with 10 runs scored and 10 runs batted in. So very productive from the catching position. Hernandez bounced one in front of the plate or might have skipped right off the plate. And a count one and one. They're underway in Detroit. They had a rain delay between the Tigers and the White Sox to get started. A brief one at that. Check. Did he go? No, says first base umpire Gabe Morales. Swing and a miss, and it's two and two. You were talking about Hernandez when he first came up. He had a fastball in the mid-90s. Well, he can throw it now 90 or thereabouts, but when he needs to reach back and get one, he can throw it 93, 94, and there was a 94 right there to put a little extra on that one that he just threw prior to that pitch. Two down. Well, follow every Indians game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. You can get live look-ins, instant replay, audio scores, and the free MLB TV game of the day and more. You download on the App Store or you can visit Indians.com. Chris Dickerson has very, been a very pleasant surprise for the Indians this year since coming over in the trade from Pittsburgh. He's also pleasantly surprising in his career against Felix Hernandez. How about two for three with a home run? Bounced in front of the plate. You know, it's interesting. I was just thinking the Pirates traded Dickerson over here because they have a, a surplus, if you will, of, of young outfielders. Their, their outfield at the big league level is set now for the future, and they're dangling one of their talented minor league outfield prospects in front of Boston, hoping to be able to pry John Lester loose. That's the that's the big name that's out there right now. Well, yes, it is. Rumors were flying this afternoon about where Lester may or may not be headed. Well, he was due to start tonight and scratched yeah. from that start. 
Which tells you talks have, have reached the somewhat serious stage if you're going to start yeah, you're gonna, a guy. Yeah, you would think so. Well, there again, he is a free agent at the end of the year. They have had their discussions for free agency. I think he wants a, a long-term deal, and I don't know if Boston is w willing to, you know, fill that long-term, the years part of it, that they feel they're not going to be able to sign him. Dickerson chased one in the dirt, and the Indians go 1-2-3. Hernandez gets his first strikeout of the night. Cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Corey Kluber and Felix Hernandez both dominating here in the early going. Both have faced the minimum through three. Dustin Ackley going to lead off here in the fourth. Either cutter or maybe a little slider. It looked like a cutter because it was a little harder. I looked at the speed and it was 87. That's usually 87, 88 is his cutter. But it looked like it had very good tilt to it, didn't it? Sure did. It looked like a slider. There's a another one in there for a strike. It's 0 and 2. What Kluber has been doing a little bit more now with left-handed hitters is throwing that uh, change-ups. Look at this uh, wow. ratio. Out of play. What were you saying about the yeah, with left-handed hitters? He's throwing more change-ups now to him, and he has a very good change-up. I mean, maybe now he's just out there getting a feel for it a little bit more because the cutter is always a plus pitch. The slider, good movement on his fastball, but that changeup's good as well. Swung on and missed. There was the slider. Had the good bite, downward movement. Third strikeout for Kluber. Well, with Justin Masterson now off to St. Louis, let's go downstairs to Katie with him. Who fills the leadership void at the front of the rotation? Well, Matt, today in particular, both Mickey Calloway and Terry Francona sat down Corey Kluber to talk to him just about that. And there's no doubting that Corey Kluber's been a leader in his own right this season, but now that role develops a little bit more. They didn't want to add any more pressure, and they specifically told him, we don't want you to do anything that you haven't been doing. Just continue to do exactly what you've been doing, and guys will follow the way that he leads by example. 
Yeah, sometimes that rah-rah stuff is, you know, overrated. You, you show people how to do it, and they will follow you. Well, think about this. Kluber, as the pitcher, he's going to be the leader of that staff. He's a quiet guy. He's not a very vocal, uh, you know, emotional guy. Michael Brantley is your leader by your everyday player. He's not an emotional guy. He goes out there. He plays every day. They're both very similar, and they're not rah-rah guys, so that you, you can't ask them to do something that they're not capable of doing. That ball's clobber deep center. Brantley back makes the catch right in front of the bullpen. Two down here in the fourth. Now Brantley, Dr. Smooth, just gliding back. I wasn't sure he was going to have enough room to make the catch, but he did indeed. Oh, yeah, he had plenty of room. Comes to the stop, puts it away, keep it in the yard. He'll run it down. That, there's the motion right there. He pointed it out. Boy, okay, thanks, Corey. You know what's great, though, is that he doesn't have that outward emotion, but he's a funny guy, and he's got a, a, a sharp sense of humor, and, you know, he's kind of the prankster in the clubhouse. Guys have been slowly leaking stories about how every time there's something going on, he's the one behind it. I think that's he's the that's stalker great. that hides. He's, <laughs> he's the guy that's in that closet hiding. <laughs> you know, he's the the stealth comic. <laughs> Robinson Cano bounced out his only time up. Pulls it foul. Don't you remember that when you were probably playing? It's the quiet ones you always got to worry about. Yeah, keep your eye open. You never hear from them. And, Something goes wrong. The other one's back there laughing. <laughs> the 1-1. One, one. On a play. You mentioned last night the way Iwakuma was pitching that Mike Zanino was just sitting in a rocking chair. It's the way it looks like for Jan Gomes tonight. Well, both these guys, uh, they can throw anything at any time. I mean, you, you rarely get to see matchups this good a lot. And, and, you know, sometimes when you expect to see a great one, it, it's not all it's built. Or cracked up to be, and there's a, could be a mistake right there. A routine play. Murphy with a throw, and it's very close, but he's called safe. Cano just beats the tag of Cabrera, and it will go as a two-out single and an error, I would imagine. Yes, it has to. But that's what we're talking about, the little things. There's an extra base, and a lot of times you don't want to give up. At least there's two outs here. Murphy, it's just a one-hop ball that he just doesn't catch. Goes off, watch, his, his arm or his glove, he just never got it. Went off the thumb of his glove. Take another look here. How close was it? Cabrera just couldn't get the tag there in time. That throw had another foot on it. Maybe Cano's out at second base. Yeah, but that does go as a hit and an error. Kendry Morales lined out to left his only time up. 0 for 6 in the series. Bouncing ball to first. There Santana has it. Inning over. No runs ahead, a man left. Middle of the fourth, still no score.
SportsOhio.com. Check out the game day live page. New video of LeBron James in Taiwan. Sam Amico's Cavs and NBA web chat. It's all on FoxSportsOhio.com. Nine up, nine down so far for Felix Hernandez. Second time around, we'll see if the Indians make any adjustments, if there are any to be made. Jason Kipnis is going to lead it off. I mentioned before, Indians, they've got the, uh, the, the pants rolled up in honor of their teammate Justin Masterson, who was traded today to St. Louis. Kip's got the old school stirrups with the with Sannies. the. And he's got the high tops, too. That's like a, almost like a Frank Howard throwback right there, huh? Now, think Hondo would have wore high tops when he played? No. They didn't have high tops back then. Johnny Yu wore high tops. Well, that was football. That wasn't in baseball. That's what Kibnis looks like he's wearing. Looks like he's got the Johnny Yu spikes on. <laughs> I'll buy that. I, I remember Johnny Yu. That's not. That's something for his ankle, isn't it? Or is that the whole spike? I think spike? That's, the, that's the part of the shoe, yeah. It is? Uh-huh. It's just the way the shoe is designed, I think. This makes a, a, makes if a, it is, that's an ugly shoe. <laughs> Thanks for the endorsement. Well, I mean, <laughs> you think you can see who did it? I mean, that's all right. They've got better shoes than that. Here's the one-two pitch. That's hard to tell. It's a good call, though. There you go. There's a, there's a look at the uh -huh. back of the shoes. Okay. The Sandy, so that's that's old school. Yeah. The two two. And a foul off the foot. So they have good protection, good padding. Yeah. They might have steel toes on them, too. <laughs> Phil Knight will not be calling you anytime soon, I can tell you that. That's all right. Be no I, shoe deal in your future. I know. Well, that's fine. <laughs> that's <laughs> Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Low and way a full count. I don't know if I'm allowed to wear those up here anyway with my coat and tie. It may be against the rules. <laughs> I think that would be a good look for you. Those... Those shoes in your suit would be perfect. I don't know. I'd have to clear it with Murph first. <laughs> Speaking of shoes, a little shoe time for Felix Hernandez. He wants equal time. Okay, I want to see if he's wearing high tops. He can wear whatever he wants. The way he's been pitching this year. He could go out and Buster Browns. The payoff pitch. Kipnis taps it towards second. Cano waits back. One away. Our injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Michael Bourne, Jason Giammi, Nigel Morgan. Three Indians players currently on the DL. Morning was out today. Working out with the club on the field. So have to hope that he's getting closer being able to get out on a rehab assignment, get back with the club. As Dribble Cabrera bounced out in his first time up to second base. Out of play to the left. Well, we got to send out some birthday wishes. Uh, Bud Selig, Commissioner Selig, turning 80 today. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Commish. Shirley Mullins of Lorraine is turning 74, and we have some special get well wishes to Bell Parsons. Get well soon. This will be the commissioner's last year in the game. He'll be retiring in January. Any word on who's uh, got the inside track? Yeah, there was something when we were out on the road. Um, Popped Greenberg, up out of play. Greenberg had uh, was getting some ink. Hank's son. 
Yeah, Hank Greenberg's son. I yeah. did read that. Yeah, yeah you're right. Was in the, but I he's think kind the of been saying today. no to this yeah, point. Yeah, he's huh? been laying low. He's just a lot, you know, jockeying for the position. I mean, how can you turn down a twenty million dollar a year job, with access to a plane? And, Is that all? Yeah. Wow. That's part of negotiations. He's a lawyer. Well, he's been part of baseball, and you know, it's certainly on the resume. Yeah. You know that he has worked with some of the people around in Major League Baseball for quite some time, but I'm sure there's other candidates. I'm not quite sure who and the the list, mm -hmm. but we will see. Swung out and missed. Cabrera strikes out two down. Second strikeout for Hernandez. He's starting to get a feel now for his pitches when he gets to two strikes. You see that changeup, he can also throw at different speeds, too. And that ball, the bottom just drops out. See how he holds it? It's it's deep, but, I mean, he can throw it a little bit harder at times. He can take it off. It's almost it's like, like a, a Vulcan three, grip. Yeah, like a three-finger changeup yeah, almost. Yeah, it's like a prong, yes. The, the, the thumb and the baby finger at the bottom of that ball, and he can, depending on how hard he wants to throw it, keep those fingers together up top. Michael Brantley takes a breaking ball down and in. Well, I guess the Tigers couldn't wait for the rain to stop. In Detroit, they've scored six in the first inning against the White Sox, and they're still batting. Take you a look know, at that changeup grip again. You see where that, that baby finger is underneath and that yeah. thumb. And that can guide it in, and those other that that one finger's on the side. He can readjust those three fingers, make it go a little bit harder, takes it take a little bit off. It's not at one speed. Plus, he has the breaking ball, and he can a uh, couple of different fastballs. He's so good. He's been around for so long, and he's only 28 years old. Look at it behind it. It's like the circle change. Oh, you see that finger yeah. on the side of the ball? Oh, big curve. So Brantley saw 94 on the black and then 81 on the big slow hook. That's why this guy is having the kind of year that he's had so far. He's thrown 42 pitches, 30 strikes. And that one just missed, not by much. Brantley with a great eye, though, at the plate. Well, that is true. That ball a little bit off the plate. Brantley knows. Hernandez says that's close. And you, you, if you start giving him that call, he will have a perfect game. Michael fouls it off. Terry Francona, he's got a front row seat for a terrific matchup here tonight. Felix Hernandez, Corey Kluber matching each other pitch for pitch thus far. Struck him out looking. And we've played four complete with no score.
Hyde Honda at I-71 and Pearl Road in Middleburg Heights. Buy Levin Furniture for the best deals on furniture and mattresses. Shop Levin's. And buy Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. Beautiful shot of the sun setting. Terminal Tower. Gorgeous sky. Look at these guys tonight. 45 pitches each. 39 strikes for Kluber. 32. Yeah. Hernandez. Yeah, 71. 71 strikes out of 90. Well, this is what uh, we thought this game could be like. The two guys in the middle of the diamond dominating, and they're up to this point. Swung on and missed. Same pitch, figure well if he swung at it. I'll try to throw it again, but Seeger lays off. That's a tough pitch to lay off when you get to two strikes. Up and in, spun him out of the way. Two balls, two strikes. Indians still play the shift for Seeger. And they strike him out. Boy, Kluber, his fourth strikeout on the night. One away here in inning number five. This is a hard cutter from Kluber. It didn't have as much break, but you can see how yeah. effective it is. It was at 90. Usually his cutter's at 87, 88. He put a little more on it, tightened that cut up a little bit, and he got the swing and the miss. Well, Rick, you mentioned how Hernandez can change speeds with his changeup. Kluber at times does the same thing with that cut fastball. That's beautiful. You mentioned earlier, you said, boy, that looked like a slider, but it was a, a, a cutter. That's how much tilt it's got working tonight. He has been so good this month and everything he's been throwing. I mean, he's had seven o two 2 counts tonight. That's where his strikeouts come from. Logan Morrison bangs one up the middle and it's through for a base hit. Third hit tonight for Seattle. And a one out single here in the fifth. Gibness going to his right. You're going to see the ball just get under his glove. That ball, uh, Corey left it up a little bit. And by the time Gibness could get there, it's underneath his glove for a base hit. That's a th uh, third hit. Now for the the Mariners, single in the second, fourth, and now the fifth. Mike Zanino struck out back in the third. Bang to third. Chisenhall plants, goes to second. There's one. Kipnis on the first. Double play. Sensational. Around the horn, 5-4-3. Ends the inning. Oh, Chisholm made a terrific stop and then just stuck that back foot in the ground and fired a seed to Kipnis, who made a strong turn to Santana, and the inning is over.
All right, you can get $15 free by purchasing uh, KeyBank Kids value tickets for tomorrow night's game against the Mariners. You can use the $15 kids at concessions or merchandise stands when you purchase with an adult ticket. So visit Indians.com Kids Value. All right, no scores. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Carlos Santana, Lonnie Chisinau, and Nick Swisher due for the tribe. 12 up, 12 down so far for Hernandez. He has struck out three, including the last two consecutively. Downstairs. One on one. Just off the plate. That's the good eye that Santana has. Yeah, he doesn't like to expand his zone early in a count, and I think that's why sometimes he, he's always in a pretty good hitter's count. But a lot of times he battles his way back into it because he's down 0-2 a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So he, he takes a lot of fastballs early in the count. But he has a uh, nice hitter's count now, 3-1. and one. Rip foul up the third baseline. Well, there's one normally where, you know, you see Santana try to pull a 3-1 pitch. That time, he got the fastball. He stayed on it and tried to hit it the other way, which, my goodness, I'd love to see him do that more. Look at that. Stayed on it, slaps it the other way. Maybe that had a little more on it than he thought. Takes the walk. First base runner of the night for the Indians. And a leadoff free pass here in the fifth for Santana. Time now for a Mazda game break. Let's send it out to Al Pulaski. Hey, man, Rick in Detroit tonight. The beginning portion of the game delayed due to rain. Hector Nowessi wishes it would have kept on raining. He gave up six runs here in the first, including this three-run homer by Nick Castellanos. Six-nothing Detroit, second inning. Matt? No, that didn't take long, did it? Yeah, boy. It was Chicago doing the dirty work last night late in the ball game. A little bit outside. Just off the plate, Chisenhall showing a good eye and some patience here as he gets ahead in the count two and one. Just so you know, oppositions have stolen 14 of 17 bases against Hernandez if you wanted to try and do something. You have a 2-1 count now. I don't care what Santa, I know what you're thinking, and I know what everybody's saying, but, you, you know, try and, you, you figure he's going to throw a strike here. That's what I would be thinking. Well, it was there for you. You know, because he's not going to give up much. He, he changed up on a 2-1 pitch. There it was, right there. So nice pitch to swing at, but it, it wasn't the fastball. Maybe that's what Chisholm Hall was looking for. Now the 2-2. Rifled in the right field. That's a base hit. Chavez can't get it. It goes to the wall. Santana coming around third. Sarwa puts the stop sign up. Chisholm Hall scampers back to second base. Cano does have a terrific arm 
and he was the cut man. But Santana had a full head of steam coming around third, and I guess with nobody out, that's Mike the, Sarbaugh said, let's not get a runner thrown out at third at home plate. That's the only way I think there's nobody out, and you don't want to get the guy thrown out your first out at home. But I thought he had it. He came back when that ball gets by Chavez in right field. I said, you got to try and send him here because Santona, uh, Santana had a full head of speed. And here he comes, here he comes. Now look at him. He stops him early, and that ball wasn't even at the cutoff, man. I have a feeling he could have made it right there, but let's hope he gets him in anyway because with no outs, Seattle bringing their infield in. Yeah. And normally you don't do that with nobody out. Usually you wait to one out. Nick Swisher, a good night last night. Hit the ball hard his first time up to deep left. Fly ball here would... Certainly get a run home to the outfield, and Hernandez thought he had a strike there. Didn't get the call, and it's 1-0. Oh. Bounce between first and second. Cano flags it down, and Swisher beats him to the bag. Terrific hustle. Well, the mistake was made by Hernandez where the ball's hit to the right side. He never got to first base. I'm a little surprised Santana didn't go, too. Well, that's what happens when you say make the ball go through with nobody out. Yeah. You know, watch this. Hernandez. He gave up. He was, a, he was watching. And now by the time he realized, I got to get to first base, he couldn't. Now he's in trouble. That was a nice stab by Cano right Sure was. There. I thought it was by him. Yeah, I did, too. It was by him. He ends up stabbing it, but no. He, he got caught by standing. He was watching the play. Now David Murphy looks at a ball down low as the Indians have a golden opportunity now with the bases loaded and nobody out. Murphy bounced out his first time up. He hit a ground ball to Cano at second. This time he hits a ground ball to first. Morrison comes home. They get the out there. One away. Base is still loaded, but now one out. Well, it's right in front of Morrison. All he has to do is come to home plate and just give a good feed. You're not going to turn two. You just get that lead runner. Now you have an opportunity to turn a double play. But still, the Indians have the bases loaded. That's the first out of the inning. So now Chisholm Hall is the runner at third base. Swisher's at second. Murphy at first. Gomes. Fly to right, his first time up. Down low for ball one. Gomes takes and a fastball in there for a strike. This all started with a leadoff walk to Carlos Santana. Then Chisinau doubled. Swisher the infield hit after the fielder's choice by Murphy. Gomes with the bases loaded and one out. Looks at a ball in the dirt. Pretty nice play there by Zanino. He smothered that ball, and it didn't go anywhere. Look at that. He ends up just pinning it up against his chest protector. And Hernandez looked in there and said, nice play. Bouncing ball, first base, fair ball! Chisinau scores. Here comes Swisher. 
It's a two-run double for Jan Gomes, and the Indians have the lead. He just bounced it up the first baseline, and with Morrison playing off the line, he had no shot to get to it. Chisenhall and Swisher both cross home plate, and the Indians will play from in front. Well, well done by Gomes here. He had the count in his favor. He was very patient. That was a 94-mile-an-hour fastball that he did not try to do too much with. He just takes what you're going to get, and that was a double down the right field line, driving in a pair. So a great inning here for the Indians that they've been able to put together, and it would be nice to add on while you can. Yeah, Chris Dickerson struck out his first time up. He's down on the count 0 and 1. Infield still in for Seattle. And a one ball, one strike count. Zanino doing a nice job to keep the ball in front of him here. And because a pass ball here would net the Indians another run with Murphy at third. And Gomes now at second. Bouncing ball to first. Morrison has it coming home with the throw. And David Murphy is out number two. Second put out at the dish in the inning. And now Gomes to third. Dickerson at first on the fielder's choice. And with two outs, Jason Kipnis will be the batter. Yeah, both the outs in this inning have gone 3-2. Kipnis is flied out, grounded out, and he'll be the seventh man to bat in the inning. Three hits in the inning, two runs in. Dickerson takes off, throw it on the second base, not in time. Dickerson picks up his second stolen base since joining the Tribe, and he went in there with a full head of steam. He almost slid off the bag he went in so hard. Well, it's a good time to run, man. With that guy, you've got the lead. Watch how he keeps Zanino his back foot up. barely on the bag. Yeah, he did. Well, watch Miller's foot on the bag. He thought he was going to slide off, but he gets in there safely. So now it's second and third base hit. It's two more. Another block by Zanino. That's at least a third this inning with a runner at third base. Well, you have to know with this guy, and Zanino's catching and doing a beautiful job, that when you call a certain pitch, he may throw it in that dirt because he wants to keep it down, so you aren't ready for everything. And Zanino has been... Unbelievable, but they've made Hernandez work here in the fifth. 2 1. Out of play. And again, it all started with a walk to Santana. Just the 30th walk issued this year by Hernandez against 176 strikeouts. Now the 2-2. Kipnis chased it in the dirt, and the inning is over. But the Indians send seven men to the plate, and thanks to Jan Gomes, the Indians have a 2-0 lead.
two nothing now in favor of the tribe as we head to the sixth inning and time now for our AT&T fan photo of the game and remember you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have them shown during one of our telecasts this year it's all courtesy of AT&T. Corey Kluber will face Brad Miller, James Jones, and then top of the order, Dustin Ackley, here in the sixth. Kluber has struck out four. He has not walked a batter, and he's given up three singles. Well, they've been able to give them the lead now. Let's see how Corey can respond. Defense has also turned a pair of double plays behind Kluber on the infield tonight. And also, Chisholm made a nice grab on Miller, his first at bat back in the third inning. That line drive yeah. that he had to backhand. Miller's got that interesting approach in that when he stands in the box, he'll hold the bat up with just his left hand. And then he'll bring his other hand to the bottom of the it's just interesting I don't, can't think anybody else I've ever seen do that before one away America's new sports network is the place to turn before every goal every slam and every game with America's pregame weeknights at six only on Fox Sports one and streaming live on Fox Sports go James Jones struck out in his first time up back in the third. In on the grass at third, Lonnie Chisenhall trying to take away the potential for a bunt. He leaned back, but that ball was clear over the heart of the plate. 15 out of 18 first pitch strikes. Yeah, and he has 10 batters out on three pitches or less. Breaking ball, and that one. Again, it's a you know, cutter, but it, it just, it, it sometimes it's just baffling. 0 oh 2. Most times when a team faces Kluber, they're going to be a little more patient, you know, to make them throw strikes, but I, I can see why they're not. I'm sure they watch video and they know that this guy throws strikes, but when he gets ahead of you, that's what he can do to you. I mean, fastball, cutter, slider, good night. Fifth strikeout of the night for Kluber. Two down in the sixth. Watch the bottom. Well, you won't see it from this angle so much, but the bottom just falls out on this pitch. Yeah, and you see where Gomes is trying to block it. That shot coming to you on our Wendy slow motion replay. Look at it. Just goes straight down. That's the second straight time he has uh, made Jones look bad. Dustin Ackley 0 for 2 on the night. In the air left field, Dickerson charging hard, makes the catch. And on seven pitches, the Mariners go 1, 2, 3.
another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night on Friday when the Indians take on the Texas Rangers. That'll be during the game, Dollar Dogs, and then after the game, there'll be a post-game fireworks show set to the hits of 1994. Just go to Indians.com to get your tickets. Be a busy weekend here with the Rangers in town. Tommy's statue unveiling Saturday. Slider's birthday party with all his buddies coming in on Sunday. Fastball outside corner, just off the plate. And a whale of a game going tonight. As Dribble Cabrera, there's a strike at the knees on the outside part of the plate. This went from 91 to 79. 91 at the knees and then that big slow hook. And Cabrera followed that one off of his front leg or foot. Well, that ball was sinking going down, and it goes right off his uh, right foot. Looked like at the top part of it. Might have got the big toe. Sergeant Holka. In the dirt. And it's two and two. Cabrera reached for it. And just a little roller to Cano, one down. Our in-game recap brought to you by Toyota. Boy, Corey Kluber has been sensational here tonight. Six innings. He struck out five. He's made just 60 pitches in six innings. Meanwhile, offensively, Jan Gomes cashing in with a two-run double. Gave the Indians the 2-0 lead, and that's where we stand. Just off the outside edge. Brantley has bounced out, called out on strikes his last time up. Lloyd McClendon. He's watching his ace go out and pitch a solid game. He's given up two runs, but once again, the problem is his hitters haven't given him any support. Down and in, almost hit him on the foot. So from 0-2 to 3-2. 
You got Michael called his last at bat back in the fourth inning to end that inning. See what he has to feature here on the full count. One might wonder, boy, does Felix Hernandez ever get frustrated by the lack of support? Well, maybe if it was something new, but this is nothing new for Felix Hernandez. Remember, back in 2010, he won the Cy Young Award despite the fact his record was 13 and 12. Yeah. Not many guys win the Cy Young Award with a record that, like yeah. that, but he was so good. But he just didn't get a lot of run support. 2.27 ERA led the league. Almost 250 innings pitched led the league. No, he started 34 games. He's lower than that now. He had six he, complete games that year. I know. He's coming into this game. Uh, it started at 199. Bounced by Santana Foul, first base side. Well, he's definitely... Without a doubt, I mean, when we only get to see him pitch maybe once, twice a year if we're lucky. This is the second time seeing that we only play him. But, boy, if this guy was in the East Coast and in a big market, he would be by far the best. And that think, would be Think Pedro Martinez in terms of the hype that oh, would surround the him. The hype would be unbelievable for this guy. Popped him straight up. Right at the plate. Zanino. Two down. You can always have the latest information on the Indians right at your fingertips by following Tribe reporter Joe Reedy from FoxSportsOhio.com on Twitter at Joe Reedy for the latest news and stories on your favorite team. Two away for Lonnie Chisnell. Pretty safe to say Chisnell has the hardest hit ball of the game, he scalded one to right center field that skipped past Andy Chavez all the way to the wall. And it helps set up the Indians' two run fifth. Yeah, that ball didn't take long to get past him out in right field. And that was when he. Tried to bunt that first pitch. Yeah. Bunted it foul, got the count to 2-1, and then hit a bullet in the right center. Out of play. Lonnie with that double, his 21st of the year. That's a career best for him. You know, the most doubles he ever hit in a season was 31. That was his second pro season. When he was back in uh, Able, A and Double A that year. Out of play. Up the third baseline, it stays fair. And Lonnie got a late break out of the box, and he's out by a half a step. Kind of cost himself there because he thought it was going to go foul, and it stayed fair. Terry Francona out of the dugout to take a look. He will not challenge. Oh, that ball was foul. That took a crazy hop. That's why Chisenhall didn't get out of the box. It was in foul ground and then hopped back into fair territory in front of the bag. And the inning is over.
Major League Baseball on Fox Sports 1 returns Saturday with one of baseball's premier rivalries as Derek Jeter and the Yankees will be in Boston to take on David Ortiz and the Red Sox. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Andy Chavez leads off the seventh for Seattle, showing Bunt taking a strike with Chisinau in on the grass at third. To left field, charging hard, Dickerson reaches down, dives and hangs on for out number one. Boy, that was a terrific effort by Chris Dickerson. Got a good break on it. And then once he committed, he just laid out. Yeah, well, that's a tough one there, boy. When you got once you get a good jump on it, you see you can catch it. You got to continue. He does. He's going to slide that glove right under before the ball hits the ground. A very nice catch, and you get the leadoff man, leadoff man in the inning, which is a huge out. He picked up the divot with his, the palm of his hand. Yeah, you must replace your divots here. Usually it takes a sand wedge to take a divot like that. <laughs> I know it. Robinson Cano taking a strike. He had a base hit his last time up. Yeah, you know, that, that's a good point. Usually it's your knee that's sliding or your cleat that gets stuck into the grass, not your hand that slides that yeah. really takes that divot. Usually that grass will give. Out of play. Nice catch kid brought a glove and he makes a nice catch there he goes his buddy with the Hapner jersey tried and he booted it because he doesn't have a glove oh he does have one but yeah he had one the lefty but the guy behind him caught it half retired his glove years ago that might be half's glove <laughs> that's where that's where he, <laughs> he lost it and then that's where it is all these years later Swung on and missed. Another strikeout for Corey Kluber. That's number six on the night. Two down. Great clip of the game from last night. Indians bullpen. Nick Hagan on a career high two and a third innings. Carlos Carrasco retired. The only man he faced. Kyle Crockett a nice job. John Axford got a strikeout. It's Indians bullpen. Has done a terrific job really all season long. Cody Allen taking over at the back end and the closers role has really taken off. In there for a strike. It's only taking Corey Kluber now. Here, we're in the seventh inning, Matt. Right now, we stand at nine pitches to get the third out of an inning. So, the first six, he's at nine pitches. He has wasted nothing. Yeah, I mean, he's been efficient, but he's taken it to a different level tonight. Well, the 33 pitches through the first three innings, and... 27 the second time around four five and six good breaking ball in there for a strike Morales yes, checks the old, yes the home plate umpire said he went too far and that's seven strikeouts for Kluber. That's Kluber with a K. <laughs> Time now for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be.
Well, you get a look in at Progressive Field on this beautiful night from our Panini's overstuffed cam. Indians, Mariners, Tribe leading it two to nothing. Bottom of the seventh. Swisher, Murphy, Gomes do up. Felix Hernandez right at 90 pitches on the night. Type of game we thought we were going to see right from the outset. The Indians were able to get through on Felix Hernandez back in the fifth inning because of a leadoff walk to Santana. We got a few base hits and the big base hit coming off the bat of Jan Gomes. And a hard hit ball by Swisher, a base hit. His second hit tonight and his fourth hit in the series. So that's a great sign as Swisher's starting to heat up now. You know the great sign I see from Swisher, man? It's up the middle and it's the other way now. There's that leadoff walk by Santana. And then Chisholm gets a huge hit, drives it past. So they decide to hold him up. Swisher gets an infield single because of Hernandez. Then you get the force out at home plate route number one. And then Jan Gomes gets the big double down the right field line. And that's the damage for the Indians. David Murphy 0 for 2 on the night. Good breaking ball, and he drops it in there for strike two. Well, there's Murph now. He gets into that protect mode, and with two strikes, he he swings from his nose. He to can his find toes. it. He can find it somehow. Now the 0-2. Just by the mound. Cano waits back. Unloads to get Murphy. Swisher in the scoring position. Time once again for a Mazda game break. Let's send it out to Al Pulowski. Well, already, Matt, let's go to the K in Kansas City. Minnesota taking on the Royals. Danny Duffy back on the hill for KC, but Josh Willingham gets in here for his 11th home run of the season. one nothing. Minnesota during the third inning in Kansas City, Matt. All right, thanks, Al. Low and away, ball one. Bouncing ball to third, backing up Seeger, fields it, fires it, and Gomes is out number two. Well, uh, the Rangers are in town this weekend, and on Saturday night, as I told you, they will be unveiling Jim Tomey's statue out in center field, and the fans will get a replica statue, courtesy of Key Bank. If you're interested in tickets, please visit Indians.com. Come on out this weekend. That's Saturday night. Jim told me in the house. Should be fun. I saw chance to reminisce so. a little bit. Oh boy. Chris Dickerson looks at a big curveball, one of the few that hasn't hit early in the count tonight. Outside, he missed that time. He hasn't had, uh, this is only the second 2-0 count that Hernandez has had tonight. The other one coming to Michael Brantley.
Dickerson swung right over the top that time, and it's two and one. Sixty four percent strikes, and the Indians were able to get to him in the fifth inning. They sent seven men to the plate, they scored a couple of runs. Two and two. Really took something off on that one. Add and subtract. Key to pitching. But with, when these guys do it, they do it with such precise control that yeah. they're able to at least get swings and misses, you yeah. know? They don't give you a lot of fat ones over the no, middle of the No, they do not. When you get them, you better not follow it off because there's not many to get after. You have to take advantage of situations when you have them because very few opportunities that you're going to get to string back-to-back -back hits together against good pitchers. Only seven hits in this game total. Indians have four. The Mariners have three. Swung on and missed, and Hernandez gets out of the jam here in the seventh. It remains Cleveland two, Seattle nothing. the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Stay tuned for Indians Live brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It's coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. Corey Kluber is going into the eighth inning tonight. He has struck out seven. He has not walked a batter. He's given up three singles. He's had nine 0 2 counts. Not once has a hitter gotten a 2 0 against him. Well, that's how he's been, it seems like, the whole month. In his last three games 27 strikeouts, one walk. That's uh, taking it to a different level when you command the baseball like that. Bouncing ball with the shift on. Cabrera from the outfield grass throws him out. One down. And that's promised earlier. It's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Double play by Santana. Touch first, throw to second. That's the first double play. And a nice backhanded stab by Chisenhall. Brantley runs one down. And then here comes the second double play, a 5 4 3 around the horn. And a nice play there by Dickerson coming in. How can't you like playing defense behind Corey Kluber? Because every pitch you're expecting to be a strike. So as a defender, you have to love it, man. You're expecting every pitch to be hit at you. 
even though he's a strikeout guy, he doesn't have you sitting and then waiting on your heels because right. he strikes you out. 13 outs tonight, three pitches or less for Kluber. That's the key. I mean, that's that keeps you on your toes. You right. know the ball's going to be put in play quickly. No doubt. Boy, that's right up the shin burner. I mean, you talk about consistent and look at the total. And and this is what's telling you that the Mariners are aggressive because they know he's going to throw strikes. So you'll have some seven and eight pitch innings. And when you do, that gets you deep into a game. And that's what Kluber has been able to do so well this month is go deep into the game and save his bullpen. He's been the man for Terry Francona. Outside corner called strike three Morrison he's out looking and that's strikeout number eight. Well this is what you call the backdoor breaking ball right there on the edge what nice break to it late. Good tilt on that slider comes down and that umpire has been seeing him. Make a lot of good pitches tonight. Vic Carapaza says nicely done. 13th game this year of eight or more strikeouts. And again, he hasn't walked anybody tonight. Ground ball to third. Scooped up by Chisinau. Throws him out. One, two, three on six pitches in the eighth inning for Corey Kluber. Well, come on out to the ballpark here on Sunday, and you can celebrate Slider's birthday. He will be 24 years old this year, and all Slider's friends and mascots will be in town, and kids, you get to run the bases after the ball game. That'll be courtesy of Cleveland Clinic, so visit Indians.com for your tickets. Today's Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. Joe Bimel coming on now for Seattle. Left hander in relief. Uh, Felix Hernandez, who went seven tonight and allowed two runs on four hits. This guy, another 139 ERA. The Seattle bullpen, the best in the business and the best in this league this year. Top of the order for the Indians as Jason Kipnis stands in.
And a strike over the outside corner. Kipnis was going to try to bunt. Instead, it's 0 2. Way off the dish. Slow breaking ball missed downstairs two and two the kill. The left hander fires and that's upstairs full kill. Lloyd McClendon's team came into this series having lost eight of their last 11, but they got a big win last night in the series opener. You know, they scored some runs. In the air to center field. Jones makes the catch one away. In game box score brought to you by. Hyundai. Indians got it done with three hits in the fifth inning. Plating a pair of runs. Chisnall with a double. Swisher the hustling infield single. Gomes brought them both home with a double down the right field line. Well, you know, a lot of talk in Seattle that even though the Mariners added Kendry Morales, that they're still looking for a right-handed bat to add some thump to the middle of their line. A problem they have is there's a lot of teams looking for that. Well, how many guys are out there? You're right. And who's available, realistically? Who is available and what do you have to give up? And there was a lot of talk while we were in Los Angeles, in fact, about uh, Matt Kemp center fielder for the Dodgers obviously unhappy there with his role now and a lot of money owed to him though that becomes a problem how much are the Dodgers willing to eat to move him and what do they want well, in return and now even though the trade deadline ends tomorrow at four o'clock you can still work trades yeah tomorrow's the deadline for non waiver trades that's the easiest way to sort of delineate the difference after tomorrow you can still make trades but only players who clear waivers, which a lot of folks feel like somebody like a Matt Kemp, for example, could be moved because with that contract, with all that money owed him, who's going to be willing to put a claim in on him? Because if you do, the Dodgers are going to say, he's yours now. Well, yeah, a lot of, they're out right. from under the money. Small then. market teams will not make that claim. That's for sure. It's the old Jose Canseco trick. That's what happened to the Yankees. They put the claim in on him to try to block him from going somewhere that year, and they ended up stuck with him when it with Boston or something like that I don't remember exactly but yeah it was probably one of those years like that so there still could be some deals consummated after tomorrow but there will be plenty of 
anticipation. Four o'clock Eastern time tomorrow as the deadline looms. Stay tuned for Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Coming up right after the ball game here on Sports Time Ohio. Corey Kluber going to try to finish what he started here tonight. Pitched nine innings his last time out. Unfortunately, that game went 14 innings. Look at that one over the minimum tonight and he's thrown 77 pitches. That is like Greg Maddox type of game right there. Three hits eight strikeouts. No walks. Kind of appropriate seeing how Greg Maddox just went into the Hall of Fame over the weekend. Brad Miller 0 for 2 breaking ball strike. Well, you talk about focused. Bounce to first. Santana picks it clean. One away. When I went into the clubhouse to say goodbye to Justin Masterson today, Masterson and Kluber, their lockers are right next to each other, and Kluber was intently going over to game plan, preparing, studying for tonight's start. But he and Masterson were having a conversation. And on this, the day the Indians... Traded Masterson to St. Louis. His teammates all came out with their pants rolled up. The way Masterson wore his uniform as a Cleveland Indian. And Kluber has come out with that steely resolve and the same demeanor we've seen all season long. He has just simply dominated the Seattle Mariner lineup here tonight. I didn't know if he would be able to top anything that he pitched in his last game at Kansas City with a no decision on the nine innings. This one might be better. Yeah, you're right. In a lot of ways, you're right. Because while he was perfect into the seventh inning right. in that start, he has just been cruising through yeah. this lineup. 17 tonight. outs today, three pitches or less. That's a, that's why he's at 80 pitches. And he still has eight strikeouts. And he has just been pounding the strike zone. This has been a, a great one. I don't remember the last time a guy that I saw watch the game saw a pitch into the ninth inning that wasn't already at 100 pitches. Well, enjoy this one because you won't see it for a long time again. Swing and a miss in the count one and one. Only three hitters have had a two ball count tonight.
Downstairs, and it's two and one. It's one of those games, Rick, where he's got a shutout going, and that's always special. But it feels like he's pitching a no-hitter. Yeah, it does. Because that's uh, what the Indians desperately need is a win. And a strike called. It's two and two. Crowd of just under 15,000, but they're up on their feet roaring now as Kluber zeroes in. The target from Jan Gomes, the 2 2 pitch. Swing a ground ball to second. Kipnis has it. A shutout for Corey Kluber. And the Indians beat Felix Hernandez and the Seattle Mariners 2 0. It wasn't perfect, but it was nearly flawless. <laughs> As Corey Kluber goes to 11 and 6 on the year, and Felix Hernandez tastes defeat for just the third time in this, his 23rd start of the year. Wow, what a game, exactly what we expected it, it was going to be like. And how many times has that happened? But I'll tell you what, I don't know if you'll ever see Corey Kluber any better than he was tonight. Boy, what a gem. He can relax, smile. His teammates are thrilled. That was a, a fun game to watch. The Indians with the win get to within a game of the 500 mark at 53 and 54, and the Seattle Mariners drop to 55 and 52 on the season. Series now even at a game apiece, and the series finale will come your way tomorrow night right here on Sports Time Ohio. Right now, it's time for our key play of the game, brought to you by. Key bank. Well, I mean, uh, can it be anything else but Corey Kluber tonight? As good as he was, he mixed his pitches beautifully. He had a couple of double play balls. He let his defense do some work. He helped his own cause. He had eight strikeouts going at it. A great slider, a great cutter, a very good changeup. And I mean, he just mixed his pitches so well. Gomes had to love sitting back there catching him tonight because he was just. As good as we've seen all year long. Corey Kluber is going to be our key bank, key play of the game, and that is brought to you by Key Bank. As I said before, that's Kluber, Kluber with a K. Tonight he put on a clinic, and right now he's standing by with our Katie Witham. I think he might actually agree with you tonight. He did put on a clinic. Corey, your second complete game, fifth time you pitched into the ninth inning. You only faced one over the minimum. What made you so effective tonight? Um, I think obviously the first and foremost was pounding the strike zone. Uh, they're a really aggressive lineup, so it was kind of one of those things where I established early that I was going to be in the zone, and uh, they kind of got they kind of got overly aggressive throughout points of the game, and uh, I got some quick innings. The thing about striking out so many is typically the pitch count rises for you. You finished this game nine innings with only 85 pitches. How were you able to be so effective and yet still generate those swings and misses? Um, I think, like I said, you know, they, were, they came out aggressive from the get-go, and then they stayed aggressive throughout the entire game. And, uh, you know, I think I had some five, six pitch innings mixed in there, so that's a good way to keep it low. That this is a sad day in a sense that you lose a guy like Justin Masters and specifically Terry Francona and Mickey Calloway talked about how they spoke with you about how they want to see you be the leader today. Was that at all in the back of your mind and something you thought about during this game, going out there and leading by example today? No, not really. I didn't try to do anything different than I always try to do out there. Um, you know, just pitch as long as I can until Tito comes and takes the ball from me. Uh, you know, we wore our socks up for the big man, so that was a little uh, tribute to him. But no, other than that, I was just trying to, you know, keep doing what I've been doing. And you did it. Corey, appreciate the time. Big win. Thank you. Guys, we will send it back to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Katie. Corey Kluber finished with eight strikeouts here tonight. 23 out of 28 first pitch strikes, which is why he was ahead, which is why he was able to attack the aggressive hitters of the Mariners and just cruise through this complete game victory here tonight. We're back with some final thoughts right after this.